Coming in hot on a Tuesday from New Lisbon, Wisconsin. I'm coming in hotter because it is only a balmy 58 degrees here in Overland Park, Kansas. I would say it's coming in perfect. Coming Welcome in perfect. aboard. Today is uh, October 10th, the year 2023. Welcome aboard, everybody. You're listening to the Crushing Iron Podcast, and this is episode 721. It is, and uh, perfect swimming weather up here. <laughs> <laughs> perfect, perfect polar plunge weather uh, up there. I'm, uh, listen, regardless of the temperature, especially for the the uh, population that listens to this podcast specifically, regardless of temperature and time of year, very, very few athletes will ever say, ah. Oh, Perfect swim weather. Perfect swim Perfect. weather. <laughs> Similar. Every athlete finds something wrong to, for something. You know, there's always like, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just, you know, I think there might be, you know, group swim. So I'm not even going to go to the pool because I'm probably going to get kicked out. Or it's too hot. Or it was too cold. Or I had to share a lane. Or they don't have any lane lines in. Or I've only got 30 minutes. You know how, you know, triathlete starts. Any, any reason to not swim? <laughs> well, I got this, I got this hangnail coach and I, I'm just a little bit afraid it's going to get infected. So what do you think about, I, I don't know, maybe taking November off swimming just to make <laughs> sure that it heals up correctly, uh, to get back in the water or right, coach, I get another tattoo. So <laughs> and my tattoo artist said, I got to be out at least three months. And you're like, dude, this is your. 19th tattoo this year like there's because the, listen swimming is like, like the old school like middle school and high school the aunt that's died 17 times right ah my aunt passed away and you're like dude your aunt passed away four weeks ago which is why you couldn't turn in your project oh yeah that was a different aunt what about the one before that how many how many brothers and sisters you know related to your your parents have ah they got a lot that's that's swimming everyone finds like an excuse and goes back on it for tattoos or infections or have an adverse reaction to the chlorine level. I'm not sure what they did. I think they coated the lane lines with the new plaster. And it's just really aggravating my skin right now. So I think I think it's best that I take, what do you say, January 1st, give a little bit of time, get the holidays. Let's start back in January. So yeah, it's very, very few people are going to say there's is any perfect swim weather. But I'm glad that you, I'm glad you feel that way. It's a, it's a great place to be and it's, a, so it's a great spirit to have. Yeah, well, it is true because I, I do see a lot of comments about, oh, my God, that water's too warm. Oh, it was freezing. It's mm. too cold. There, there's never like a – I don't know. It, what it, Nobody's found the perfect water temperature, I guess, no, for swimming. Exactly. Nobody's found, nobody's found their hoodie and shorts and flip-flops swim weather. I mean, to me, if you're thinking open water, you're, you're talking like 65, 66. To me, is about perfect. Like when we got in the water up at Wisconsin – before the race, I didn't want to say it was like 69 or 70. Yeah. Felt, I mean, it felt cool. But even after 500 meters in the swim cap, like I'm baking. Like I'm getting hot in a wetsuit. Like I think it's just hot. So I think like 64 or 65 is about perfect to where it's it's just cool and crisp enough to where it can keep you cool the whole time. Not too hot to where you get hot towards the end, but also not too cold to where you have to over swim to start to heat up. You know, it's just like I get running outside right now. It's perfect. You just run out no matter what, you know, your effort is. You can just flow right into it. Like this morning it was 43 degrees. It was about perfect. Now, when you get to, you know, get to mid 20s and below, you, you tend to run your first mile just a little bit quicker because you're trying to generate some body heat and get warm because it's, you know, you don't want to overdress when you run. That's the kind of the same thing with swimming. So, yeah, I think there is a, there is a perfect temp in less than the pool. It's, there, you're probably never going to find a perfect temp in the pool unless you're like doing the Olympics and got those, you know, Olympic size you know, depth and, and regulation temp pools because at the Y it's like 84. You got to keep the old aqua jog ladies happy. And if their skin isn't peeling off from the boiling water, then it's too cold. So yeah, I, I, I sympathize and I can relate to the, to the water in, in most pools because it's just, uh, yeah, it's, it's usually not ideal for a lot of people. Yeah. And of course it's our, you know, job and goal to get past that and just you know adapt and and be there 
You know, you can't freak out sure. about cold water. You can't. I mean, you just got to figure out a way. Is my point. Well, I mean, hey, listen, I we talked about this a little before the podcast. You know what? I'm going to go again today with no intro. I'm living it on the edge, people. So no intro today. We'll go right into the wow. podcast. Uh, I will say, yeah, I'm just feeling it. I'm going to go off. I'm going to do my thing. I'm going to stay flexible. It's that time of year. I will say that before we get going too far down <clears throat> on the uh, today's today's topic, I will say that later this week. We will be discussing the uh, Ironman World Championships in Kona, the women's race. And as you and I were talking before we went live, you know, I, I'm I'm always the even keel gray guy. Try not to get too high. Try not to get too low. I try to leave the hyperbole out of greatest ever and worst ever. This is, unless someone comes down with like, you know, the last minute Christy Wellington, you know, sick, like they're in transition race morning. Like she pulled out, I think it was like eight or nine years ago. Is this is the most stacked <clears throat> I've ever seen a women's field, and maybe even a men's field. If you look at the names on the list, you got the returning champion, you got Chelsea Sodaro, you got Daniela Reef, who said this is her last one. Her father passed away a few a few months ago. She's won this race four times. You got Lucy Charles Barkley, who is the perennial bridesmaid. Uh, the, 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 the maid of honor, she's been second too many times to, to she's kind of like the Buffalo bills of the women's, uh, women's pro ranks. She's been in the Super Bowl a lot, but always gets runner up. Uh, you got Taylor nib who is up there, who is the two times 70.3 world champion who is coming up just kind of out of nowhere to do it. But listening to the interview the other day, she said she's been kind of doing some longer riding earlier in the year in case she did Kona cause she punched her ticket last year. Uh, She's going to be in the mix. So she's going to, to me, is going to change the whole dynamic of the race. So totally different dynamic. And then you got Cat Matthews, who got second at 70.3 World Championships this year, come back from her bike accident last year. She's one of my favorite athletes. I think she's going to have an amazing day. You got Laura Phillip. It's loaded. It is straight loaded. And I think the dynamics are going to be nuts. So uh, we'll do we'll do a little bit of a preview of that. On Thursday, give the uh, the women their due on the uh, World Championships. Anyway, it's, it's going to be an awesome day. I can't wait. I got no kids sports. I got nothing. I'm going to be glued to the TV. We got, I think, what, 60, 26 ladies there uh, on the big island uh, and, and some supporters, some, some volunteers who found their way to hang out in Hawaii for a week or week and a half. So good for them. But uh, yeah, I'll do that on Thursday. But going back to what you said about um, talking about, you know, finding a way, right, in the, in the more – and how hard it is, I think. And we, I think we, we semi went into this last week talking about accountability and, and being your own accountability partner. But it, it's interesting, like that you bring up the topic about like keeping your, and not necessarily keeping your world small, right? Which, which I generally think is a good idea anyway. A lot of people want to have like four hundred friends and three, you know, thirty five hundred Facebook groups they're in, and and six different things are part of, and their life is so busy, they're so stretched then that they're never really. A lot of quality time for themselves, like you know, and so there, I do think there's a <clears throat> there's a lot to be said for keeping your world small, right? You know, have a lot, have like a couple, like three to four to five, just really, really great friends. I'm not saying that's all you need, but it, it kind of is. Versus having a bunch of you know Facebook friends and general friends that you can't really have meaningful conversations with. And so I do think there's a lot to be said for keeping your world small and, and tight and and less noisy, right? It's more authentic. And same thing goes for for training. Right? You were talking about, you know, the swimming and, and the amount of excuses and stuff. And that's and if you think about it, like, like you know, with uh, when it comes to triathlon, how many excuses are available? Well, it's excuses times three, right? Because you have swim excuses, bike excuses, run excuses. So there's all these opportunities for excuses, right? And then you got so all these gear and you got the trainers and the that are always acting up or or Zwift crash and my iPad died and I can't work out and, and my 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 goggles don't you know were leaking so I couldn't do this and and my 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 AirPods were no batteries so and I hate and I hate running without music and I did this all the treadmills are taken and there's there's always something or there's always an excuse to be had. And and then you got you go on and you add on the data pieces and and the measurement and the expectations and the comparison with the you know, the uploads and it's there's it's so much going on it can be an overload for people and you know if you talk about just you know people who you know strictly just run unless it's like a tornado outside you got no excuse either get on the treadmill or you put on your run shoes and go run not a lot to go wrong on your run equipment right 
honestly, same thing with swimming. It's inside, right? And so you got your goggles, your cap, you can swim. Even though they're not your, even if they're not your goggles, go to the Lost and Found. I mean, I'll be honest, the pair that I'm rocking right now, I got from the Lost and Found, they fit perfectly. Uh, Must um, be nice. So they're always, they're always something, right? So I do, I think there's, and, and you add that on top of a life that most people live that is already overscheduled and too busy. So you got an overscheduled life, your work commitments are high, your life commitments are high, your spousal commitments are high, your relationship commitments are high, your kids' sports commitments are high, all commitments are high. Everyone, I wouldn't say everyone, but I think most people in general right now are, are overscheduled. Way too much going on. And that is a problem. And you combine that with a sport that one, on the, on the one hand, it offers variety and it offers a swap, right? So yeah, you might not be able to bike today because something happened, but in, in exchange, you can go get a run in. And although most, you know, I think a lot of athletes might not choose it. They say, ah, it's just not my day today. You know, not my day. Uh, the Velcro is not fitting perfectly on my, uh, on my cycling shoe. So you know what? It's not my day. I'm going to move on. And so it does offer that, but at the same time, it offers so much to think about. But the thing is, is that it doesn't have to be that way. It can be very, 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 very simple. And I, <clears throat> you and I both work with, again, a, a, a wide range of athletes, not from just different ability levels, but different, I won't say attention span levels, but di- different levels of, you know, everything has to be overanalyzed. It, it has to be a comment after everything. I'm, I'm going to use another tennis example because I'm playing a lot of tennis lately. I was playing last week with a guy that I played with, you know, quite a few times and we're just going to have a pickup match and we're playing. It was, it was, it was like the day where we were going from the day before was 80 and then the next day was like 55. And so we were, it was like insanely windy. The sun was out every in the, in between every single point, he made a comment about, about the wind or the sun or getting in the flow or doing this. And I was like, dude, you know, I think I'm, I'm, if I missed a shot, you'd be like, ah, it's just the wind, right? That your back. I'm like, no, it's not the wind's fault. It's mine. Like I, I know the wind's at my back. We're not going to, and I finally said, listen, we're not going to play the blame game. It's not the weather's fault. It's not the sunshine's fault. It's not my backup racket's fault. It's mine. I should make those shots. One, because I know the condition. So it's my job and my responsibility to pivot, to adjust, right? And so we had this conversation then again, when you brought it up this morning, I was like, that's so very similar to, to training and triathlon and in the amount of opportunities we have to make excuses or to find things that don't go right. And to go down that rabbit hole, it's like, there's already so many rabbit holes available and athletes just kind of stay out of those and just do the work. And yes, you don't have to be perfect, but just get the work done and do it correctly. I mean, I, I, this is a great example. I had an athlete who qual- who qualified for Boston this last weekend. The first email I got, it was like, you know, two or three sentences was like, yeah, I'm so excited. I'm over the moon. I can't believe I qualified for Boston. Next next paragraph. Do you think I need to look for another one? Because, you know, the qualification standards might change. And I'm not sure if my, you know, five minutes, 40 seconds over is going to be good enough. I'm like, we're not. Stop it. Stop it right now. <laughs> we're not doing this shit. Under the marathon, why are we even going? <laughs> but that is like the perfect example of most triathletes is they spend all of, I don't know, two and a half seconds on the present and they spend the rest of the time on the past comparisons, expectations, what they did, what they wanted, and then and the rest of the time on the future. Well, you know, that means I, I, I'm going to be here, I'm there. Keep everything small and short and simple. And I'm telling you, it won't be, it won't just be more fun, right? To not think and and flip through and go through every data point and every every field of every session you do with a fine tooth comb. One, you got better things to do, but it just it takes so much mental and emotional energy. We only have so much of that left. So keep things small when it comes to what you focus on, which is one, getting the work done. But two, when it comes to, you know, the amount of excuses that we have and the opportunities because we do three different sports and it does unfortunately take a lot of equipment, more equipment I think we need <laughs> in a lot of ways, you have more opportunities to be, uh, you know, to have that little, that little devil on your shoulder, right? That's like, yeah, but you know, there was a glitch in Zwift 
and your iPad shut down, your workout stopped at 20 minutes. I know you've got 50 minutes left, but do you really want to just do it, sit here and pedal, looking at a screen? Nah. Done. Calling it a day. Calling it a day. Minutes is probably 20 minutes is good enough. You know, Zwift crash, nothing I can do about it. I lost all my data, right? Lost it all. Like someone, you know, came in your house and stole your passport and social security card, went on and created an identity. That's what people ask. Like, I lost my data. Keep it small. Keep it lots, especially this time of year when you need to be thinking things are flexible. You need to keep things fun and just maintain, you know, a general level of fitness. Sounds good to me. Now, I, when uh, when I see things like that, my Zwift died or whatever the case may be in the doubt, my eyes kind of glaze over a little bit when I'm reading that kind of stuff because I'm like, I just, uh, I don't know. It's, uh, I can get it, but, um, you know, I think, you know, I was talking about this this morning about keeping your world small. And, and I told you that one of the things that kind of prompted that again, I had written it down because I think about it a lot and, you know, sort of create um, a world with digestible bites and things you can, you know, chew off either, either through a list or, you know, instead of like, I, I, I've always been sort of a massive project guy. I got these grand ideas and I was looking around my, uh, iMac today and my desktop is just loaded with shit like that. I'm like, no wonder I can't, you know, get any of these things done. They're all like massive ideas and whatever. I just need to start chipping away at them. And, and, and it dawned on me that, I mean, you said it, the emotional and mental bandwidth for things. And as I get older, that thing, you like, you know, gets a little tighter. I don't have time for, uh, you know, um, going out of the way and, and really, you know, it just sort of wears you down. I mean, and so it's like when I train and everything, um, you know, my, I have an overactive mind with that shit. So I really try to bring it back into simplicity. And like right now we've talked about it, but you know, just kind of focused on just running and, and really doing mobility things and kind of working on shit that I want to feel better about, you know, because I think that's another thing that, um, we can get in the sport a while and it just, you know, at some point there's a, a diminishing marginal returns and, and shit doesn't feel as good. And I think that's because we get out of balance and we neglect the maintenance and do all these types of things. And, so that's a that's a real important one for me because I, I remember back, you know, five years ago or whatever when I used to run and I had this sort of flow. And I see it once in a while now, but it's just not as common. And I think there's just a trade-off as you kind of get deeper in the sport and, and, you know, you get older where you really need to pay attention to that kind of shit because you you want that feeling. You don't, you know, we're tough and we we – keep grinding away and everything like that. But I think eventually it just sort of hits a point of no return for a lot of people. And that's the one thing I've always tried to stay away from because, you know, I think it's good for us what we do and everything. And I want to keep doing it for a long time. And the more I abuse myself and force, I guess, force feed things into it is not a good idea, especially like you're saying right now is a great time to kind of step back and, and really kind of reclaim some feelings that we know we have in, inside us. And I always talk about it. Like if I ever feel that way now, I'm like, I know I still have it in me. I just need to figure out how to get it in me more often, you know? So I, I feel like I'm not getting slower. I don't feel like I'm getting weaker per se. I just feel like um, sometimes I go down a uh, intense training road that you know, creates more problems. So I need to step back and figure it out rather than um, just plowing forward all the time. And, you know, I also, cause I've been sitting up here and we've got, you know, it's getting colder today. Yeah, it is. It was like low forties this morning and the water temperature in the lake here is getting, getting down there. And so I've been trying to get in there every day and just sort of sit there and, um, you know, I, I love, the cold plunge idea, but it's really hard. And I've been trying to get through that obstacle because that's the probably, you know, there, you know, we always talk about benefits of different things like inflammation and, you know, just whatever, but really one of the biggest benefits of, of getting in cold water like that for me is just doing a hard thing and get building the habit to, that creates better habits with the little things in life. And 
the other thing about sitting in that water last like last night i was telling you about is uh you really can't think of anything else you know it kind of really kind of helps you just zero in your world and you're just sitting there in the cold water the sun's going down and wind's blowing up <laughs> you're just trying to be breathe and stay warm and i just think that's always great practice you know and you talk about keeping your world small in general with people and as we get older i think um you know like you said a hundred or a thousand facebook friends or whatever and to me that just overwhelms me sometimes because um, there's just so many people on the periphery of everything that it just distracts a little bit of energy constantly. And as I get older, I just don't have as much energy for that shit. <laughs> and, it, and it becomes a frustration. So that's what I love thinking about right now is a time to really work on that. Bring in your world in, focusing on things that feel good and um, that kind of make you do things that are good for your body and mind and, and just stick there and not, not really worry about, you know, all the distractions that we have and, and just like do stuff that feels good and kind of get your world back into a, a manageable situation. Because that's what I think happens a lot is this we, I hear it all the time. Like life is going crazy on me right now. I'm doing this, 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 this. You gotta, you gotta fucking pare that down or it's just going to keep winding out of control. And I don't, you know, there's a book a long time ago, this guy wrote that was called the quickening. It was like 20 years ago. And it was talking about how society, everything in society is getting faster and faster and faster. And I really feel that a lot. And I think we have to be, be aware of it or else we're going to just get sucked into the vortex of shit and not even realize what we're doing half the time. I'm done. Well, there's the the latter piece of that is the discussion as a parent I have all the time with other parents is just how fast and how much exposure there is for kids and their brains can't even differentiate or compute any of it. They're just not flat out ready for it, but they're just exposed to it all. But there's but the first thing, you know, when you start talking about, you know, you know, you have all these, you know, grandiose ideas and things like this and they seem so overwhelming is it always brings you back to the the one liner that you get from athletes, and and it's it's funny you you like bring it up that way is because this is like the week end and next week where you get it, coach, comma. I want to qualify for Kona. <laughs> I want to qualify for the world championships, and you know, and first and foremost, you know, I'm a you know, I got in the sport as an athlete, not as a coach. So I get the feeling. I get it. You see the photos, you watch the NBC coverage, you watch it live, and you just think, man, like, you watch the special interest stories, and it just, it hits you different. And I think the last few times that I've had people ask me that, and I've been really honest, I'm like, well, you know, we need to do about a two or three year build for this, if we're being realistic. I mean, people like to, people don't like to hear realistic things i want to qualify for kona okay that is like the example of the i've got this really 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 great idea that i want to focus on or i want to drop three hours off my time or i did great this year and i want to do, drop another hour off and so you add too many swims a week too many bikes a week too many runs a week and i'm also going to start strength training four times a week and i'm, I'm going to do this five times a week it's too much it's so overwhelming that you quit Instead of starting with the end goal that seems so massive, it's so complex and and so, you know, more than likely overly complicated, start with like the really, really, really small piece, right? Don't worry about the time or the the pace of the run or the threshold you need to get to on the bike or what you need to swim, but start with things that are more habit behavioral changing. Am I going to even achieve that if I can't be consistent? No. Okay. So... Instead of chasing extra first, why don't I just chase being relatively consistent for six to eight weeks? Prove to myself that given the current load, or maybe even less, that I can be consistent. Because I can't achieve the goal of qualifying for Kona unless I'm consistent. All right, so I'm going to do that. I'm gonna I can do that. I can do that. I'm going to... And then the the... 
the temptation, right, is to, but but I don't, I don't need I don't need to do more. I need to, I don't need to do less. I need to do more. I'm never, I'm never going to qualify if I do less. And we talk about this frequently. You know what's better, scheduling ten hours and getting in nine, so you're ninety percent completion rate, or scheduling fifteen hours and getting in seven or eight, right? It's the first one. So scale it back and prove to yourself too that you can do the most simple thing, which is to put in consistent effort for an extended period of time. Okay, check. I got that box. Seems simple, right? I just got to be consistent. I got to do this. In doing those things, small, keeping things in vision, not not analyzing how far you how far you are behind in pace or or watts or distance or speed, whatever it is after each workout behind your goal, because that's just defeating. And then you miss one, and all you think of is I'm further behind further behind further behind and then finally you get so far you feel so far behind you just quit your world's too big your goal's too big it's too forefront you're not thinking about peeling those kind of the layers of the onion back and, and figuring out what exactly you need to do to get to even get to the point to where you can train for that you know we'd always talk about train we train so we train so we can we can train the way we need to train to train for the race well when it comes to like establishing goals and and creating small tangent we have a great podcast called i think micro goals <clears throat> this is and this is the time of year i think we did it this time last year two years ago mm-hmm. is to keep things small and saying you know what i don't have to go pro tomorrow i just need to get a little bit better today and that little bit better might just be doing all 30 minutes of my run instead of cutting it short at 25 because i think we oftentimes as athletes we sh- we um we are a little bit short-sighted on the value of two minutes more, right? Or cutting it short five minutes, right? Or, the, or we go falling, falling, uh, you know, behind or, or feeling like we're failing when it comes to like the temptation route. Ah, oh, you know, 30 minutes is enough. And you, you might be right, but if it's scheduled for 45, there's a lesson in there and there's a habit that's forming. Am I going to be the person that always cuts it short Right. And yes, there's always a time and place to cut it short or stop short, as George Costanza would say. But there, if you're, you know, have you're injured or sick or not feeling it, but if you're feeling fine, there's always a habit to create one that where you're creating one to where you are going to see it through and be committed the whole way, or one where you're always going to bail early. And usually <clears throat> that happens on a more global scale when it comes to handling your whole load. Six is good enough. I did a little bit better than last week. And then you always kind of convince yourself, right, that what you're doing is enough. And sometimes it might be. But when it comes to, you know, establishing a pattern and, and focusing on things differently and, and being a better athlete and wanting to do more, it's not about putting more on your plate, right? It's about getting right what's already on it. Because if you can't do that right, then you can't do anything else right. But that is, I think, the one of the biggest perils and pitfalls of, of athletes is your answer, most athletes answer is more. More running, more cycling, more swimming five times a week, 18 hours a week. One Ironman, I got to practice. Three Ironman, got to do it. I got to run 420 miles. I got to run 17 marathons. I got to do 19 century rides. And not just century rides, I got to run for an hour and a half off the bike. It's always to do more. Let's put more <clears throat> on my plate when I already know I can't finish the two sides that are already on it, much less the meat. That's what we do. We overload, right? And then we complain that we have too much. Yeah, hey, I just get burnt out, man. I just do too much. You burnt, you lit the match, you threw it on the hay, and you and you threw the gas on, and you watched it burn. You didn't have to. A little bitty matchbox, one match a couple times a year, burn it. The rest of the time, just gather matches. Just pick them up, put them in, keep walking. Put them in, keep up, keep walking. That's it. This the, the simplistic piece of it is so powerful and so overlooked. I think one because it's not flashy, right? It doesn't, you know, you're not being a world beater every day. You're just chipping away each day. But doing that, kind of like the the uh, kind of this lower level of <clears throat> it's not fame, and this low, lower level of attention, right? Of 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 the glamour of the the you know social media piece of it that you know the sport has become in a lot of ways is you're kind of just like bubbling up underneath the surface. You don't need to boil yet because once you boil, you know you lose water. 
So you just need to keep it just right there, just right there. But we overcomplicate, we we overstretch, we're we're uh, we we expand and stretch our limits so far that we end up breaking. But really, the best thing you can do, again, especially if you're an inconsistent athlete, which, which consistency is the number one. Anyone will tell you this. The most the the the, uh, the number one thing when it comes to reaching your potential is consistency. If you can't be consistent, you're never going to reach it. You might have some good days, but a lot of times you're going to have more, more than that. You're going to have a lot of bad days. If you can't be consistent, you can't get the best out of yourself. And that usually comes with simplifying things. Don't add, add I, think I, need, I think I need more of this. I think I need more of this. I think I need more of this, right? And then it takes you, you know, 75 years to hash through it, right? And an athlete emailed me the other day about like a laundry list of items. Yeah, and, and if, if we need to, if we need to break this up over two calls, we can. And I said, "Listen, man, if this t- <laughs> this two calls, if this takes us two calls, we're speaking different languages. Like most things are just point blank, you know, point blank. You don't need that much. It's just what do you? Because and I think we're I think we've now been kind of taught to ask questions, right? Because we assume there always has to be more. So instead of really trying to gain answers." You're just asking questions because you feel like there has to be more or there should be more. It should be more complicated because most things in life are complicated, but that's how they're sold, right? We even talked about this before the podcast. Like, you know, in, in, we tell athletes all the time when it comes to data and what they see in training peaks, what they see in their garment, what they see in power. It's like just because it's offered doesn't mean you need it. Doesn't mean you need it. Right. And that that goes for all things. But again, I think we're we've become like trained as, as human beings to always, you know, we, there's gotta be a catch. Right. That can't just be it can't just be that simple to run a 30 minute run. It can't be that simple. Right. It can't be that not easy, but it can't be that straight that's probably a better word, straightforward. It can't be the straightforward. We got there's gotta be more to it. I mean, I see all these things, all these things. You know, we had two more athletes qualify for Boston this last weekend with long runs of four, 14 miles and marathon PRs. Nah, it's got to be more than that. More to it. More to it. No, you just be consistent and, and run plenty and then be fresh on race day. Keep it that simple. That's it. The The, the goal is to be fresh, but then really what you see is most athletes go, especially to the marathon, it's almost worse than an Ironman race, is most athletes that toe the line for a marathon are so overtrained and brittle, they haven't, they, they're, they, they erased their race six weeks ago on a training run. Keep it simple, right? Because it also see it, and it's scary, right? Because this same athlete that qualified and had an awesome day for the past, their first time we worked together. So for the past, like, you know, six, seven weeks, it's been like, I don't think we're running long enough. I don't think we're running long enough. They, we we got to run more. All my friends are running this. I'm like, just trust me. Just trust me. And then finally, you, it was, I was in my kitchen, my phone went off, it was her texting me and, uh, you know, with the, with a screenshot of her race and second place and all these great things and a BQ and I laughed and Allie goes, that's true. I told you so laugh. What happened? <laughs> I, said, I said, yeah, that's, that's it. And I just said, just an athlete that, you know, they, uh, had a great day and it was one of those. Yeah, I told you so just, just trust it. And it's, Again, it all goes back to not necessarily the mileage and the duration and 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 some, you know, hack because it's not. But if you think about it, how we got to where we are now with most people and how they train is that they overthink it and they overcomplicate it. And the answer to that for most people is always more. Right? You're overcomplicating figuring out what's what's wrong with your training or your your missteps or your pitfalls, your qualifications. So instead of peeling it back and making it simple you add more. And so we've been trending that way for years. You got to do more. And then that level of more now becomes not doing enough. So we do more. And then that level of more two years later becomes you're doing the minimum and so on and so forth. So it's not like it's this magic piece. It's it's or this magic method because it's not even anywhere close to that. <laughs> it's just staying the course and not trying to overcomplicate things, but instead keeping it simple. 
And again, I think it always goes back to our, and, and as an addict, I obviously 100% relate to this. I got a headache and it says two Tylenol. I don't need two. I need four. Hello. I got to get rid of this quicker. That's just, it's always, you know, you, you, for me, you, you pour your coffee and I had this habit. I always, I stop and then do one little more, one little bit of a splash. I'm like, yeah, I need a little bit more. That's just the, I think that's just the addict piece of me, right? The alcoholic piece. I always need just a little bit more. Did I even get anything out of it? No. Is it even noticeable? No. But it's just like that thing I think we're wired with that's like, yeah, yeah, make it a little bit more. Yeah, I got to do this. Yeah, I got to do that. And it's, I think it's just an impulse of nature that we have, not just as, you know, alcoholics and, and recovery and addicts, but as human beings, that the answer is more, faster, better, richer, stronger. Everything has to be better, and we got to do it now. We got to do it, and we got to work harder to get there. And it is a, it is a, and that's, and you wonder how we got to overscheduled, overstressed. You know, I was reading a, an article the other day about the, how the scale of feeling financially secure has gone up so significantly in the last five to 10 years about what the, the number where people feel like they don't have to make any more money and that they're secure. It's gone up like by 80 to a hundred grand. And I think it's, again, it's, we create these kind of like we talked about before, again, about the company we were referencing about just, you kind of promote the illusion that there's a problem and you have the answer, right? Even though there is no problem, which is, I think, you know, a lot of marketing, right? There's this problem out there. It's like you know, when you hear pitches, like, what? so what problem are you trying to solve? And you're like, well, that's not really a problem. But if I word it this way, people are going to think they have a problem. Like, I'll never forget this guy that walked up to our, well, it was this door, back when they did door-to-door -door sales. So door-to-door -door salesman comes in and uh, he's selling knives. This is This is like 25 years ago, 30 years ago to my parents' house. He said, I'm selling knives. You got, you got wood knives, you know, wooden handles. My mom's like, yeah, get wooden handles. Well, you know, there, there's a good chance that they're probably rotting on the inside <sighs> and, they're, and they're infested with bugs. Oh God. <laughs> just swear, swear to God, just the visual from that. Tossed them all out and bought three sets. We're never using knives again that don't have one of them. So she bought all these knives a couple months ago. We we're in Nashville, go to her house. You know what she's got? Wood. Wood. <laughs> Wood knives. I was like, Mom, are you not worried about these? But just again, like the, the it's not, and I don't think it's an extreme example because that's like the, the, the way that the mind works. Like you create a problem that's not there, but just the illusion that there might be one persuades you to make a decision that's irrational that you would not normally make. And athletes make those decisions so many times over the course of a week, over the course of a training cycle, and during a race. These are rational thoughts. These are rational feelings brought upon by the latest advertisement or the the uh, you know the hashtag ambassador that says you need this or has to have this or the the pro triathlete that's you know snorting ketones now and then last year they were all vegan, the year before they were all keto. And one year, this is the best wheel. And you see these things, and you're like, all, all people are trying to do is sell. Sell, 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 sell. You sell without a soul is what a lot of people do. You got no authenticity, nothing to buy. It's just you want to buy. And you think that, oh, well, they have that, so I must need that. All of a sudden, you now need it. And in training, it's very similar. You see somebody that ran 25 miles and you're before a full marathon, you're like, I have to do that. But if you hadn't have been a part of some, you know, crazy Facebook group and seen that, that cross, that thought would have never crossed your mind. You woke up feeling incredible and you take one glance at something and all of a sudden you feel so slow and so undertrained, right? And underprepared. Nothing happened except the chemicals in your brain and you got exposed. Your ego, your confidence got exposed to something that was more. It's never less. Right, you rarely ever hear an athlete think, "Coach, I uh, I saw what other people are doing. I think we need to scale things back. We're doing too much. 
<laughs> you ne- you never, at least we don't. I'm sure maybe some coaches do, but you never see that. We're doing too much. We're riding too much. We're running too much. We're swimming too much. I, I'm 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 not burnt out. I should feel burnt out. You know, and then think the answer, you know, is to do less. No, the answer I'm ne- we've never had an athlete. I don't think the history of coaching. I've never had an athlete, but coach, we got to do more. We got to do more. If anything, they're like, why are we swimming so long? But they're, or it's always run more or do more centuries or doing this because I see people doing this. The answer is more. The answer is never what it, was, what it should be, which is, I wonder what's right for me. And I wonder if by doing less, I can create less stress in my life and simplify things to where they become more fun, they become more attainable, I can become more consistent. And then that's where the magic happens. But it is, it's, it's a weird, you know, behavioral, you know, I think, place that we've gotten ourselves on. You know, again, not in just not just as athletes, but in, but in a, as a society. Yeah, I mean, you you reference you know yourself as an addict, and I just think everybody's an addict on some level, you know, for different things. I think that's what the world has become. Is this you know I talk about dopamine craze or like fast fix or you know sugar here, sugar there, whatever it is. There's always something, and I think the patterns have been, you know, you can talk about different forms of addiction, but they're all, you know, at the core, it's very similar in that, like you said, you do shit like pour a little extra coffee when you don't really need it or whatever. And I, I think at the core of it sometimes is just a, a weird and kind of unexplainable sort of self-sabotage that we create on ourselves a lot of times, whether it's based on fear or like not deserving it or whatever you want to call it. Or thinking we don't deserve it. And, um, you know, it's sort of like uh, you're, you're talking about going long. And we're not running long enough and all this sort of thing. But I see that a lot. And, and, and often it's from people who don't, like, do the runs during the short runs during the week. And then, like, well, they, they kind of, you know, sort of blow off the week a little bit. And then, but they got to go long on the weekends. And then, then it becomes this weird cycle of, like, you know, addicted to pain or something. I think there's a weird thing in there. Like you know, triathlon has to hurt, you know, and it, I think it should be spun, you know, in the way that it's like, it should feel good. Why don't we feel good more often? I mean, you know, so I don't like how I feel after an Ironman, you know, usually the first couple of days, but you know, it does go away, but it's not like, I don't want to be sore. So what is the formula for, kind of doing things in the right way and feeling good more often and having more energy rather than, uh, you know, just like trying to race, the, like you said, six weeks before the race. I mean, what, what is that? It's like, uh, we talk about race energy a lot and I still think that's a massive play on everything. You know, if you, if you train up to, you know, say you run 18 miles or 15 miles in your long run at Boston or whatever your big marathon is and you're just basically really strong and have a good command of pace and effort and all that kind of stuff and you go in there fresh you know people are cheering and you're running with other people they're pacing you you're kind of you know as long as you can control it and not get sucked into somebody going too fast or whatever the case is you have to trust that energy i mean that i mean i always talk about how i bank on iron man fan bases for like you know extra energy and i just think it's real you know, and I think that people can't understand that necessarily. Um, and, you know, I, I wanted to ask a question. What, what, do you have any idea? Okay, so that guy broke the world record, right? The marathon the, mm. in Chicago. Mm-hmm. Like, yep, for sure. example, yeah. uh, what do you think, do you, what do you think the nutrition was for that guy? Do you have any Derek idea? Pace? Like, Obviously, like, yeah, just during the race, the gels and like, I mean, less, less than 600 calories, if not less than 500. See, this is where I go, man. <laughs> I think, well, the, the thing about it is, and people, oh, well, that, you know, and you see, you know, people heading out for these 5Ks with two fuel belts, a camelback, and like enough <laughs> exactly. gels on their waist to like, you know, support their own food truck business. And you wonder why they <laughs> bonk all the time is because they're so dependent on glycogen. Well, the reason that they're able to do that <clears throat> is because, they run so much and they run hear me here so easy so much that their body is a fat burning machine 
Mm-hmm. And you look at them and you're like, but there's no fat on them. Yeah, because they use it all, but the, what they do have, their body goes to it first. It doesn't go to the 19 gels in 17, you know, uh, shot blocks you've got, you know, rolling down your, you know, your sleeve. You know, it's like, seriously, you go to like these, these five K's and you can tell like some of the novice runners, they walk up with like the old school, like trench coat jacket and they open up the right and they got jelly beans and they got cliff shot blocks and they got all this and then they boom and they go left and they've got, you know, like two camelbacks and they open them. They're like, I got some, you need some They're like, no, I'm running a 5k. I don't need shit. Mm. But yet we, 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 and don't get me, I'm not going to, I'm trying not to get on a sugar rampage, but just how over sugared we have all become. And, and like we use that as an excuse for a lot of things, but no, I, I bet you he took in less than 600. I bet he, he loaded beforehand. Right. But nothing even close to what a lot of athletes use. Yeah. He probably went, you know, he's moving too quick. He ain't got yeah. time to stop at an aid station. Yeah. He didn't have time to do anything. No, I, I, <laughs> I get it, man. I mean, unbelievable. unbelievable what the guy did. Yeah. It's unbelievable. And I mean, it always just reminds me of little things like that. Like you're saying in the over, uh, I, I'll never forget. I was at an Olympic and, the, and it was a big one, maybe like six or 700 people. And the guy who won it, I was like, I kind of caught him afterwards. I'm like, Hey, what, what'd you do for fueling out there? He goes, yeah, I just had a little bit of salt in my water bottles. <laughs> you know, it's like, Dude, I mean, like, I don't know how legit that is or what they're, you know, maybe a few Gatorades on the, on the course or something on the run. But for the most part, yeah, I just, I get like that whole get caught up in just putting tons and tons of calories in and blaming your race on nutrition. That, that kind of has a weird thing with me. Listen, kid, we... And we, we, we talked about this before. And I think if, if you haven't listened, go back and listen to Dr. Alex Harrison podcast about, you know, fuel and, and taking it and the timing of it. But, you know, I, one of the things that I always love hearing is the I'm special approach. I, I know that works for everybody else, but I, 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 I need something different. Mm-hmm. And, and like, not just different, right? Not just a small, like 10 or 15 to 20% difference in training, right? But a total 180 from the norm. And a lot of times I hear that and I just tell people, I said, listen, you aren't that special. (laughs) It's the truth. Do your 30 minute runs. You're not that special. You think you need, it's not your body that needs that. You have wired your brain to feel like you have to have this. Because then I always ask questions and there's no answer. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I've just learned over the last year. I'm. I'm all. I'm all about quality. I'm a high quality guy. Intensity, all the time. I, I don't do well. All right, tell me about that. How'd you get there? Well, you know, I just. I just. That's what I've been doing, and I. I, just, I think. I think I feel better. Well, then why do you need a coach? Well, I just haven't been getting the results that I, you know, I feel like I'm should be getting with this. I'm like, well, that, but that that's not the approach. Then you should be getting results. Okay. Yes, yeah, I see what you're saying. Right. So I can know, and yes, there, there is no all or nothing plan for all people, but a lot of times people go so far down a rabbit hole with, you know, it's like, uh, it, to me, a lot of methods of training that people get so married to, or is very much like politics and, and, uh, and how, what people eat or don't eat. They've become like the most staunch concrete unwavering religions you'll ever see on the planet the training methods are the same way with a lot of people i i, I gotta do more if i don't do more then I, I'm, I'm never ready well have you ever thought that that you despite your own training is the results that you're getting and then if you did less what could you actually get out of it and yes is doing less the right answer for a lot of for a lot of people i mean it's not an answer for all people but it's the answer for a good portion of the people who train enough, right? Not the ones that need to be consistent, the ones who train enough to get to that point. And you, you, you very rarely hear people like, you know, and this, this is a story you can follow all week on the, on, in Kona. And a great example, right? Is for the past five, six, seven, probably as long as it's been, you know, tracked with heat acclimation, people would get to Kona like a month early, three weeks early, 
two weeks early. And then a lot of the interviews you hear this week talking about the ladies, and generally speaking, most women are smarter than men in, in a lot of ways, is you hear, you've heard a lot of them say, yeah, I chose not to go into Coda early this year. I just feel like it fries me before I even get to the race. Mm. So doing less heat exposure than they would in the past because they think it fries them out too much. <laughs> Versus what a lot of people do is, and they'll say, I, I just, I was fried before I, I, I raced, I lost my race, but in training. That's what people do. Yeah. Until somebody and, moves there and, you know, or goes there a month early and then they win it. And I'll be like, all right, well, we better go back to that plan. I don't yeah, you know if that's the truth though. Cause it all goes <laughs> back to just doing, you know, doing the right amount. You know, you can no, go, I you agree can go with back, you, but I just you think, go, you know, go back, you can go back last year and, you know, talk about the four guys that were like the huge focus, uh, Gustav Eden, Christian Blumenfeld, Lionel, San- Lionel Sanders, and Colin Chartier. You know, they were both under the quote unquote Norwegian method. They were out there a month in advance. They were all doing pretty similar training. And Colin obviously has gone way out of the sport because of his, his drug bust. And Lionel is never going to compete at a high level again. And they were, they were crushed. They were, they were spent before the race even started. They were done. And they admitted it. I mean, they did plenty of podcasts every time about how they were fried before they even got to the race. They knew it days out. Christian and, and Gustav, you know, they they had they had good days. So I think there's always like you know, one half that takes and one half that doesn't. And there's another point that you know one size doesn't fit all. But I do think that there's you know talking about going in fresh and using energy. That's another thing. You know, is to, is to is to you can't get heat acclimated. And you know, there's there's so much you can you can you can gain from something same thing going for like you know altitude training people go to altitude you can't do intensity for a while because it's too hard so you're, you're giving up a little bit to gain something in, down the road um so i always think that there's you know again going back to the special thing is like there's you know we, we all like to think that we're special you know i'll use that analogy that i've used in the in the past because this is what what my sponsor how my sponsors how my sponsor explained it to me when i was first getting sober talking about your ego and also your ego, uh, you know, with your insecurity is, you know, if you're on the dance floor in one second, you're complaining because everyone's looking at you and you're shy. And the next second you're complaining because no one's watching. And that is, yeah. you know, that is our personality. That is our ego. That is also, you know, our, our insecurity and in that our feeling of being special. And a lot of times the people just get out, get out of their own way instead of trying to do something special because they think that they are special and they need all these these you know specific interventions because of you know what they are even they have no basis besides what's going on from the chin up and they get back to the basics and they just be consistent they do the right things and they're more than likely you know they might not feel special but they'll get special results that's good that's a good way to end it man everybody likes to feel special everyone wants to feel special everybody's you're all special you already you know, are, this is our, you, already are. We'll you don't have up, to feel that yeah this you is our are. virtual yeah it's our virtual participation ribbon of life you're all you are all special in your own right you all have your strengths and we all have our weaknesses you are good enough and gosh darn it people like you mm-hmm. i'm sure very few people will even get that so i know lives get <laughs> still one of the best right it's still one of the best michael I mean, jordan yeah <laughs> so that's a legendary skin uh, just like the stop and short only the only the few special people will get the stop short uh george costanza reference um but yeah hope you got a little bit something out, out of uh today simplify things make things attainable that is the way to be successful not to do more or especially for triathletes buy more I think I'll ride my bike if I drop nine thousand dollars on this new Scott Plasma. Really? Mm. Are you for, are you serious? Like, do you think I think I need to get a new trainer? That's that's gonna get me going. No, prove it on your old one, and then seriously, do it. dear God, prove it. And just do what you gotta do. Do what you gotta do, people. As always, we love you. We appreciate you. We'll come back next uh, later this week with our uh, Kona Ironman World Championship preview for the ladies some research <laughs> yeah you, yeah you, you, you can't say you can't say yeah i think i'm riding with ben hoffman for this one you can't you can't do that for this <laughs> can't one. Do that. To, i predict one yeah. of them drops out though that's the way things are going these yeah days. usually you know it's like a yeah, first or 20th more than two 
Yeah, do a little bit of do a little bit of research. And All find right, I'll be on it. Yeah, I, I know you will. Uh, as always, go to our website, c 26 triathloncom and it's a one-stop shop for all things coaching camps and community. If you're looking for coaching for 2024, even the remainder of this year, click on the Coach tab, find the coach that is right for you. And as always, if you need anything from Mike, he is available, crushingiron at gmail.com. If you need anything from me, c26coach at gmail.com. All right, buddy. All right, man. See you Thursday. See you.